Please increase the volume. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. It's my joy to be here. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Please, while standing, let's honor Bishop Okudili and his wonderful wife. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Um, I can tell you this, that they are truly very good people, aside from being ministers of the gospel. Thank you. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the fellowship. I honor every man of God, every woman of God. Let the name of the Lord be praised in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we lift up our hands and bless his name? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your voice. One more time, lift your hands, lift your voices and let's worship him. We bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship his holy name. In one minute, I want us to thank God for this ministry, 14 years of the faithfulness of God. While I sat back there, I was telling Bishop, I said, how did you acquire this property? It takes insight, it takes beyond money. For God to just locate you in a place like this. Can we join Bishop and his wife to just thank the Lord for his faithfulness? Many of you have been healed in this ministry. Many of you have been lifted in this ministry. Be very intentional. Thank you, Jesus. Are you saying thank you? Are you saying thank you?
We lift your name higher. 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 We lift your name Jesus, because you will continually be lifted in this house. Lord, we join Bishop, we join his precious wife, the family, and the entire church family to thank you for your faithfulness. Through the ages past, that is why your name is forevermore. You've been faithful, Lord, through the ages past. That is why your name And we are saying, faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faith. We are saying, faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. One more time. Lord, we are saying, Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful. Help us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you again for this time. The Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. When we thank the Lord, we are not wasting our time. It is the way we secure our blessing because a man's blessing can be caused. And the Bible says that if we do not take it to heart to acknowledge him, he is able to cause a man's blessing. Bishop, again, thank you. Thank you, Ma. Joy to be here. Very briefly, we'll have... I'll just talk about one or two things and then we'll pray. I heard your bishop talking about um, Issachar. I think I'll just take it from there. Praise the name of the Lord. Just share a few things that will bless our hearts. The word of God is very powerful. Among many things that it does is that it gives us light. It gives us illumination. Hallelujah. And on the strength of that light, we are able to make progress. Paul said, I went up by revelation. We go up by revelation. Praise the Lord. So let's go to that scripture. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. Let me teach this morning on the sons of Issachar. 
First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. The Bible says, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren, as a result, were at their command. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, historically speaking, Issachar was one of the sons of Jacob, the ninth son of Jacob, the fifth of Leah. It was a son that he had with Leah. Remember, we're Bible students. Leah had a number of children, and the fifth of them was Issachar. And he was the ninth son of Jacob. And the Bible tells us that there was something unique about this man who later became a tribe. That there were men who, number one, please keep that scripture for us. The Bible says, they had understanding, not just of things, but of times. And then as a result... They had knowledge on what Israel should do. And that knowledge put them in command. Very, very powerful scripture. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible archives there the creation story, the book of the beginnings, Genesis 1, 14. The Bible says that in creating or recreating the earth as we know, that the Lord made certain light signify seasons and God said let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide day and night and let these lights be for signs let these lights be for seasons let this light be for days let this light be for years that means that there are Certain dimensions of light. I'm not just talking of physical lights alone. Signals. Signs in the spirit. That if people have sufficient understanding. They are able to see them like handwritings on the wall. And it can help men to know when seasons come to an end. And when seasons begin. There are three kinds of anointings that a believer is able to walk in number one there is the anointing and the engracing that comes upon you by reason of being grafted into christ are we together your oneness with christ can afford you a measure of his grace and anointing number two there is the grace and anointing that comes upon you by reason of the office you occupy so when god calls you and mandates you and gives you an office there is a grace that comes with that office. But the third kind of anointing is the grace that you receive as a result of properly discerning what the Spirit of God is doing per season. That one has nothing to do with you just being a believer. That one has nothing uh, to do with you just being in whatever ministerial office. It is possible that you can be a believer, your relationship is sound with God. It is possible that you can be effective in your office as far as the calling of God is concerned. But you still may not be relevant in a particular season. This is not backsliding. This is the inability to understand what God is doing in a season and to align with it. You will find out that just because God used you yesterday does not guarantee that you will still be used today. The continuation of your being in God's program is dependent on many factors among them these your hunger your pursuit but your discernment of what he's doing per season hallelujah this is where i believe many believers miss it they begin with god but their inability to discern when seasons change because you see like you'll be learning Every time seasons change, they come with a lot of inconvenience. And we usually do not want to make the kind of adjustment that new seasons demand. So we would rather prefer to keep our tent in old seasons. Whereas the grace had left. And we are unable to receive the new wine, the new grace that comes for new seasons. The Bible says the sons of Issachar 
among the many tribes, sons of Jacob, that these were men who uniquely had an ability to discern seasons, to know what those seasons meant, and then to know what to do about the seasons. The Bible says the result of that state was that they were in command. Everybody had to wait for their direction because they trusted their ability to discern seasons. Once upon a time, men just saw unusual stars shining in the earth. And they thought it was just geography. What is happening this night? Why is there such an unusual glow, an unusual illumination? And yet heaven was trying to speak to the earth using the stars. And men could not discern. But there were a few people, the Bible called them wise men. They were the magi. These were men who had been taught to read the constellations, to understand planetary bodies. When they saw those stars, they said, no, this is not just a usual glow. This is not just atmospheric bodies. They went and they searched their archives and they found out that those stars signified that something had happened. They went to Herod and they said, Herod, we have come because we are wise men, we are astrologers. We are coming because a sign is directing us that a king is born. And Herod said, really? Call my own people to confirm. And they went and they checked and they said, it is true. He said, please go and look for that king. When you find him, let me know so that I will come and bow down to him. It's amazing that God can be doing something in a season. And out of the millions of people within that territory, they are blinded completely to what God is doing. As believers, most times we are largely victims of conclusions in the realm of the spirit. We are hardly participants of the things that happen in the realm of the spirit. We just know that seasons unfold before us, good or bad. It was one man who was negotiating the destiny of a territory. Elijah, one. It was not as though there were many other people who came. One man was doing business with God. And even other prophets who were there were not even aware that something was going on. A man was negotiating with God that for three and a half years, there would be no drought. If you were living in the days of Elijah, you would just find out that all of a sudden rain did not come. Lord, what is going on? And God says, well, because of your insensitivity, one man has decided to take laws into his hands and shut the heavens over a territory for three and a half years. There was one woman who spent her whole life bringing Jesus from heaven to the earth. Her name is Anna the prophetess. Other people read that one day he would come, but the woman said, no, I sense that there is a season. There was a man called Daniel in scripture. Are we Bible students? I want to show you men who were able to discern that things were not just happening in their land. I, Daniel, understood by books. When he opened the books and he saw that the captivity of God's people had come to an end, he took responsibility and he began to pray. Can you imagine that in a whole land, God can be doing business with only one person because the rest are not even aware of what is happening. The day the angel came to meet Mary, there were people still moving around in the street, whereas they did not know that a real destiny discussion was going on. An angel comes to meet Mary and said, allow us to use your womb to bring the Savior. Yet there were people moving across, not knowing that something divine was happening. The day Jesus was born, there were still people buying and selling. They didn't know that divine transactions were happening in the earth. For 30 years, Jesus was walking on the earth and men could not even discern. Imagine those they sent him to buy things from. When he was buying and selling and saying, please give me wood. The man did not know he was selling wood to the man who will save him. Lack of discernment is dangerous. It was only John the prophet who was able to discern. When John saw him, he said, behold the lamb. 
This is not only this is not a 30 year old man. Don't be deceived. Don't let that body deceive you. That's the ancient of days. Behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. The people who were in that crusade ground were absolutely clueless. We don't even know what you are talking about. John said, I am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. And Jesus said, suffer it to be so. That scriptures be fulfilled. He dipped him in water and brought him out. Suddenly there was a loud noise from heaven that everybody heard. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The question I'm asking you is now. How many more spiritual things are happening within our territory that we are not seeing and knowing? You just know that once upon a time, floods started going around everywhere. But what happened in the realm of the spirit that led to that, very few people will know. You just know that once upon a time, children from two years and below were being killed. Why they were being killed, nobody knew. But the devil was looking for only one person. One. Could it be that what is happening in Africa and what is happening in Nigeria is because the devil is looking for just one person? Where are they? One family. One minister. Because they have discerned. Because Moses was born, many other people died. They thought it was just an environment that was harsh for the survival of children. But there was a spirit, there was a signal in the realm of the spirit that someone had been born. Children paid the price for it. When Jesus was born, can you imagine? Two years and below, they died. You just thought that it was that an individual or a government was wicked. But in the realm of the spirit, it was a search. Now you know why many things are happening. Kidnappings happening. Or it's not just a sociological phenomenon of terrorists. Even the terrorists don't know what is controlling them. I tell you, there is a search in the spirit. There is a kind of people that the devil is looking for. Because there are signals in the spirit. Jacob did not know that the ground he was sitting on was not just a geographic location. He lay down to sleep, the Bible says. Suddenly he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens. He stood there. Maybe it had an address where buses would stop and pick you. And yet in the realm of the spirit, that place was called the gate of heaven. Are you getting blessed? He gave lights to signify times and seasons. Three things happened to the sons of Issachar. Number one was discernment through understanding. They were a people of superior discernment. They had the faculty and the fortitude to discern. What is discernment? The quality of spiritual perception. The ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit. Discernment is akin to the five senses of a man, biologically speaking. Imagine a human being without the ability... Look up, please. Imagine a human being without the ability to see, without the ability to taste, without the ability to feel, without the ability to smell, without the ability to hear. Is that person really alive? You will enter fire and not know that it's fire burning you till you die. That's what it means to lack discernment in the realm of the spirit. The faculty of spiritual perception is so deadened that you cannot feel the impulses of the spirit. The Bible says that there were men who understood the times. The first quality we see in the sons of Issachar, very quickly, is the quality of discernment through understanding. They had built a corporate faculty of discernment even through understanding. Number two, very quickly. As a result of their discernment, 
they had the strategies for every season. This is the second quality we see in the sons of Issachar. They had the strategy for every season. In this kingdom, we win by strategies. Ask any man who is in the military that the victory of a military man is not necessarily in the vastness of the army, but the dexterity of their strategy. Are we together? Number one, discernment through understanding, the sons of Issachar. Number two, the strategy for the season. Not the strategy for the seasons past. The strategy for the current season. Number three, the third quality we see in the sons of Issachar is dominion and leadership. Leadership means they were always ahead by reason of the strategies that they had. The other nations, the other tribes had to wait for them to take the lead before they followed. That if anyone wants to walk in the similitude of the sons of Issachar, this then becomes your assignment to number one, develop the faculty of discernment through understanding. You see, this book, this book is a compendium of mysteries. Please look up. You may have heard me say it in my teachings that just because the Bible is opened does not mean it is opened. Just because you can flip it open does not mean it is open. There is a seal that unlocks this. Because the Bible is a compendium of secrets. And just because you open and you are reading does not mean the light from it is coming to you. Are we together now? Yes. The secrets of the kingdom are hidden here. And until the spirit of grace opens your eyes to see. It says, open down my eyes. Was he blind? But he said, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The day God opens your eyes, you will open this Bible. And you will no longer be reading a story. You will be reading yourself. Literally, you will find a place written about you. You will know that no one has fulfilled that prophecy yet. Listen, let me tell you something. I hope I can preach. I, I, can, I, can I be? It is not every prophecy here that was fulfilled in time past and is just informing us. There are prophecies here that there are men on earth who will fulfill it. One day you are going to stumble across a scripture. When you read it, you will know this verse is for you. Not prophetically, directly. This one is a verse about you. When the messianic prophecy was written in Isaiah 61, yes, prophetically to the church, but it was written about a specific individual. When Jesus came, are we Bible students? In Luke chapter 4, the Bible says that it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah. He opened it to read and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, for he had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, etc. When he read it, he said, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. That means the one this was written for has come. One day you will open a scripture and you will read it and find out that no one has fulfilled it before. That scripture is still there as a code waiting for you. You will now begin to trace your background and find out that it fits the description of the one they said will fulfill this. The only thing is that we come from a, a context that belittles ourselves. We just believe once it's not a white man somewhere or it's someone who had died somewhere, it can't be me fulfilling this. That's why Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Talk about the rest, but can anything good come out of Nazareth? Are we together? If we want to be the sons of Issachar in experience, there are things that we must know and there are things that we must do. Let me very quickly... 
share with you three keys. And then we'll pray. Three keys that help us to maximize new seasons. Drawing from the life of the sons of Issachar. Then somewhere as we teach, God will grant us grace to pray in this morning service. I have seen, with all due respect, I have seen great ministries. I have seen great individuals. I have seen great businessmen. I have seen great men and women of God, even captains of industry, rise to excel because they were doing well in certain seasons. And then all of a sudden you find out that they enter a season and just plateau there or fade back. That led me to study scripture. What is the secret that sustains glory? What is the secret that sustains impact? Why do people miss seasons? And some of them are not sinners. Sincere people. And yet you find out that this one was once great. Was once anointed. Was once impactful. I didn't want to live that kind of life. And I had to go to scripture to say what is the secret that really sustains people transgenerationally. Are we together? How am I able to remain relevant in the midst of changing seasons? Why are certain people, even though well-intentioned, even though well-meaning, edged out of certain programs as though God just used them and dumped them? Please pay attention to what you're about to learn. Three very powerful keys. Number one. The first key is found in Luke 24 and verse 45. The first key that can sustain a man, sustain a ministry, sustain a business. The Bible says, then he opened their eyes, their understanding. That they might understand the scripture. Understanding is a miracle of covet. Understanding is more than going to school. It's not just secular enlightenment. When you are counting the miracles in the Bible, count understanding. More than raising people from wheelchair. There is a miracle that must be performed on an individual. Called the miracle of understanding. Where your spiritual faculties are open. So that you begin to comprehend spiritual things. The miracle of understanding. You want to remain relevant? You want to continue being relevant in the program of God? You want to have the ability to discern seasons? You must have understanding. It says in all your getting, get understanding. That means even if you have wisdom without understanding, you are still in trouble. Even though it's the principal thing. Understanding is a faculty of comprehension. It is important. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae. And he was praying for them. And he said, I pray that you increase in three dimensions of knowledge. Number one, that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Number two, that you might be filled in all wisdom. And then number three, spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. The ability to understand scripture. To unlock the codes that are written in scripture. The ability to understand life. The ability to understand men. The ability to understand systems is a miracle. There is no amount of theological study that can give you that understanding. It is an impartation. It's a grace that God gives men. Please hear what I'm telling you. No matter how, what kind of concordance and lexicon, no matter what kind of theological school you go to, there is a limit. This understanding is an impartation from God. He opened their understanding.
so that you are able to see what men are just looking at understanding so you are able to read the handwritings on the wall when they think it's just a finger writing understanding when understanding comes upon you you open your bible and you can read one verse for one month and yet you are not done one verse not just a chapter running to finish the bible one verse you are drawing from the depth of that verse and you are wondering why people read it casually understanding is a miracle To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Yes, the prayer now. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. It's a real prayer. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. There was a young boy called Solomon. Listen, we talk so much about him. But let's recap on the miracle that happened to him. He was not a wealthy man. He was a man of understanding. When he offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord. He offered a thousand bond offering that night. God came to him and said, young man, you've called my attention. What do I give you? Here's what he said. Lord, I am young and I am ignorant. I don't trust my foolishness and I'm not ready to write any story about my foolishness. I pray for one thing from you, not the life of my enemy, not cars and monies. This life is a hidden code. Give me the key. This is what Solomon asks. Don't open the door for me. Give me the key. Ministry is a code. Give me the key. Influence is a code. Give me the key. Men are mysteriously complicated. Give me the key. And God looked and said, who taught you this? Who prepared you for my coming? That you did not ask for the life of your enemies. Just because your enemies are dead does not mean your friends will help you. Oh no. Enemies are not the only dangerous people. He was not just asking for understanding. He knew that every treasure in the kingdom has gates that close them. And he said, Lord, I'm only asking you for one thing. I don't need money. I don't need cars. He didn't even ask for anointing. Just give me the key. And God said, you got it. Because you have not asked for silver and gold, riches, the life of your enemies. I will give you what you have not asked for. Riches, wealth, and honor. Like no man has had before. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. If you fast for understanding, you were right. Understanding is that powerful. Understanding is not just knowing how to speak. No, it is... How do I put it now? Life is a code. Ministry is a code. Influence is a code. You will just be seeing things happen. What your eyes see is not the only thing happening. It's like driving. I can buy a car and give you. You drive it, you will be surprised you will crash land. It's still your car. When you watch a professional drive, there are many things you will not see happening. Until you sit down on that car and try it. There is something you must know about men. 
there is something you must know about ministry there is something you must know about wealth and prosperity there is something you must know about the anointing there is something you must know about longevity there is something you must know about grace there is something you must know about being a voice there is something you must know about transgenerational relevance there is something you must know about the hearts of men the miracle the 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 key that holds that is called understanding when i found this in my life i vowed that i would never chase mundane things money influence power nonsense stay with understanding and watch the lifting power when god gives you that miracle he opens your faculty to comprehend spiritual things this was my hunger i didn't know that was what jesus did to me when he appeared to me i thought it was just an impartation ah until i read my bible that the entrance of thy word give it light and then it gives understanding When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, after my encounter with him, I opened my Bible and I could not believe again. It was like someone drew a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. What is this? Things I never studied. Verses just came alive. No weapon fashioned against you. So weapons don't just come, they are fashioned. To fashion a weapon, you must study who you will be using it against. So before Satan designs a weapon, he arrays your spiritual understanding and your ignorance. He uses all of them as the tools to fashion what he will use against you. And the Bible says there's an immunity. That when these weapons are fashioned, there is only so much Satan can see. There are other things he cannot see. No weapon fashioned. Not no weapon used. The weapon used for me will not be used for you. Satan is that smart. He fashions weapons. When he sees that you do not know anything about finances, that becomes a chief tool comes the poison on the spare that you will use in your life. No weapon fashion. Listen, I'm challenging you in this 14th anniversary that when you go back home, you must cry for understanding. Lock yourself and say, Lord, I am tired of guessing. It is clear that this is not how it works. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Are we blessed this morning? Please lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry before the God of your salvation. The miracle of understanding. Someone is praying. Please pray. Please pray. Dear man of God, pray. The next level of your ministry is dependent on the opening of your understanding. And open their understanding. Are there people of prayer here? Shanan Paskata Bakata Bakarosia, Ebrakata Katapoko Sekatema, Shanatakapos, Telebranda Kapo, understanding the faculty of comprehension, Recopanda Labaco Seketele Brigadia, Ampretina Bunza Tariadaba, Sheketele Branda Parigade. Hallelujah. Look up, please. So Solomon prays. And he receives understanding. If you were Solomon's roommate, you would not know he had an encounter that night. Except that a test was going to come. Two women slept on their children. Is that true? One killed the child and quickly replaced the child. Brothers and sisters, we are not doing a long Bible study, but I want you to think. Is it really true that two women can replace their child? And yet by morning, they don't know which child is there. He's talking of more than children. This is not just about physical children. There are parents here. Even in the dark, you know your child. It's more than children. 
A child is anything that comes out from you. And the Bible says, one died and the other one was alive. And there was contention between two of them. Is that true? And then they come to this man who now had received understanding. This was the litmus test of his understanding. Watch this. Sir, they said, we were sleeping together with our children. One killed the child and replaced the child. And he sat down. He looked. The Bible says he drew the sword. As soon as the word of God was introduced into that situation, the truth came out. Immediately. When he drew the sword, he said, okay, I will kill this child. And the real mother with the child said, okay, no problem. I rather, he was using the quality of selflessness to know who was the real mother. Because the character of Satan is that it will always be attached to selfishness. So he said, whoever is free from selfishness must be the real owner. So I will use the word to test it. And the only way to test it is to use death. Death means you have no reputation again. Nothing to protect again. And he said, yes, let the vision live. Even if I die. He said, the vision is yours. Let the ministry live. Even if I die. Even if my reputation goes down. And he said, truly you are the giver of this vision. Listen to me. He used the miracle of understanding to divide and decipher between complicated issues and his fame went abroad people listened to him and said this is not the solomon we know something has come upon him i'm speaking to someone here that after this service in the name of jesus may this grace come upon your life may it be evident before everyone that this grace is upon you in the name of jesus christ please sit down Please sit down. Understanding. Let me respectfully plead with my dear co-laborers in ministry. We need to contend for understanding in these seasons. So that when somebody brings a gift, you will know which one is to kill you and which one is to bless you. Understanding. Number two, let's hurry up. The second key is found in Joshua chapter 5. Long reading, but please be patient with me. Joshua chapter 5. And it came to pass when this and that and that. Please, let's go to verse 2. Joshua chapter 5. Now watch this. They had come to Jericho now. They were preparing to conquer Jericho. Are we together? The Lord then gives a very strange instruction. Verse 2. And that time. What time? The time where they were intending to move to a new season. Remember, this instruction is tied to time. Everybody say time. Before then, such an instruction did not come. But now the time has come to take Jericho. It's a new season. And he says, and at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Why? Verse 3. We're reading down to the last verse if possible. And Joshua made sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the four skins. What is the relationship between circumcision and victory? I want to defeat Jericho. And I'm crying for divine assistance. And God is saying I cannot come. Joshua, there is something in the camp that is stopping my presence from coming. He said, take the knife. It is going to be a painful experience. Now that you have understanding, although it is painful, you will not fight it. Because you know that your victory depends on it. Please keep that scripture. He says, and Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt. He said, and this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. He said, all the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men 
they died in the wilderness after they came out of Egypt. Uh huh. Verse 5. Now the people that came were circumcised, but the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came forth from Egypt, them they had not circumcised. Please be patient. The children of Israel walked all these years in a land of milk and honey. They were not circumcised. Please go to verse. Um, what's the next verse now? It says, And their children whom they raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. It says, And it came to pass, when they were done circumcising the people, they abode in their place in the camp till they were made whole. Look up. This is, I can spend the whole day preaching here. We are talking of relevance now. God, show up to help us. And he says, no. In as much as I want to come, the people you admire did something that made me partner with them. I do not see that thing in you. The mentor that you are listening to, I'm not just visiting him and giving him miracles. There's something that happened behind the scene that you are not aware. If you want to produce his result, let me introduce you to the process. Number one, circumcision. He said those who left Egypt, they left with an ordinance of circumcision. But because of old age, they died. Now you young ones, you think it's just about power. Sit down, let me teach you how it happens. You will go through a painful process of circumcision. Notice a few things about circumcision. There is no hurrying. After the circumcision, some after that circumcision, you may not have ministerial invitations for a long time. I say you are you are being healed and you are being made whole. Circumcision is a painful and a lonely process. Do you know what it means to circumcise adults, men? You can circumcise babies. But imagine an adult. He said, that is still the condition. No matter how old you are, if it's business you want to do with me, circumcision of your old mindset, are you willing to lay your old mindset for me to cut it away? The way I was doing things yesterday, just because God is not moving the way he moved yesterday does not mean he's not the one moving. Old paradigms. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight. Circumcision will cut you away from weight. Bitterness, envy, anger, God is saying, before I introduce you to that season, I've seen tendencies in you. You will not be able to host the kind of grace I'm giving you. Submit to circumcision. Are you blessed? We're learning from the sons of Issachar. They didn't just become leaders. Let me tell you this. Ask anybody who has tasted of his work with God. The period of circumcision is a painful process. It will sting your ego. It will sting your reputation. Everything that represents your self-worth will die in that process. The for life is death. I hope we are still together. So one day God gives you a painful instruction and says for the next six months you are not preaching again. Ah, God. How about my reputation? Do you want people to think I'm backslidden? He says, well, you can choose to defend yourself or you can choose to walk with me. One day, God will wait until all your areas has been given to you. Then you will hear the instruction loud and clear. He will use a vision. He will use a dream. He will use prophetic confirmation so that you can't say you didn't hear. Take your Isaac and you drag it to the altar like a funeral and drop it there. It's not about money. He's killing something in you. Show me any man that God is using. If they do not have a history of circumcision, run away from them. Run quickly. Forget about what result you are seeing. Run away quickly. Circumcision is what guarantees that what you are seeing is real. Are 
Are we together? This is the hardest part of a believer's journey. Because at that time, God is not even entitled to talk to you. That is the time when you will be counseling others. As soon as they come, your prophetic antenna will open up. You will counsel them as soon as they go. You will say, Lord, about my issue and you will not hear anything again. There is a circumcision going on. Whereas you are trusting God for house rent. As soon as someone comes, you say, in the name of Jesus. And the person says, you can't believe it. Someone transferred five million and you are about to get angry with God. And the person will even forget you. And God says, sit down and continue praying for that person. Oh, Issachar. We're in the school of Issachar. Yes, sir. Where God will give you an instruction. You just bought your car just about when you are dancing around it. God will say, it's not your own. No. You've not yet bought your car. This one you bought, go and give it to so-so-so person. You will reject that spirit. You will cast it. You will bind it. God will say, I'm still the one. Once have I spoken, you will keep hearing. Some of you, as I'm speaking to you, that's the season you are in now. I'm helping you interpret the seasons. Lord, what is wrong? The more I pray, it looks like there are attacks. I just want to have a sound sleep. I had a busy day. 12 from the door, the Holy Ghost says, wake up. There's no sleep for you again. And you have something to do in the morning. Where are you going with me, oh God? What is the name of what you are doing with me? Am I the only one? Welcome, oh son of Issachar, to the place where he makes men. It's a place of circumcision. God tells you as a lady, he has a great destiny for you. Just when a nice guy is standing to say hello, you hear a voice from heaven. Say, you better leave that gentleman now. I told you your womb is going to bring a prophet. Stand aside. And you say, God, this is how you want to make my life useless. Let me tell you this. That is why there are only few people that eventually emerge. You see how painful the process is. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. Rewards for passing through. This is what people go through. When you talk about them, whether in private or public, God will punish you because there is blood dripping on their altar. Are we blessed? God, you are calling me to be a prophetic worshiper to the nations. And God says, for the next two years, all the songs I give you, write it, but you will not produce anything. You will not honor any invitation. He can give you an instruction. All the invitations you go to, don't collect one honorarium. Return it back to them. Your motif will keep being purged. You know God is working with you when you feel like you are dying. <laughs> Joshua chapter 6. Let's talk about the last point and then we'll pray. Is God blessing us? The third key that I want to introduce to us is found in Joshua chapter 6. After that season of circumcision, as painful as it is, as God grants grace and the healing occurs, then a miracle begins to happen. Joshua chapter 6. From verse 1, please. Now Jericho was shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Look at this kind of place of bondage. Nothing goes out nothing comes in next verse and the lord said unto joshua see i have given into thy hand jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of velo verse 3 and ye shall compass the city look at this this is now the strategy for the new season are you seeing now supernatural strategy came when circumcision was done if they had tried to fight the people in Jericho, 
they will be using a wrong strategy. Understanding led them to a season of circumcision. I didn't have time to read. Please read verse 5, chapter 5 from verse 1 to 15. So that you can understand the whole context. Because after the circumcision, suddenly Joshua sees an angel, the captain of the Lord's army, who said, now I am here to come and partner with you. Let me reveal to you the strategy that will bring Jericho down. You want heaven to assist you? You want encounters? You must pass through that season of circumcision. Listen, God calls you to be a kingdom financier and he tells you you will be a billionaire. And for a long time, people even look at you and say, something is wrong with you. One day in your place of fasting and prayer, when your circumcision is done, his majesty will come to you and say, get a notebook. I want to give you my strategy for your rising. Right. You will write what looks like a foolish statement. But that's what will lift you to the point where people will think you are holding something. And they are right. They are right. It has to be something lifting you. I remember when the Lord came to me and began to give me secrets that will cause a man to excel not just in ministry and in a generation. What I'm teaching is not a sermon. I am teaching history. These are the keys. Take. And when you hold those keys, that is the symbol of dominion. It's like a scepter upon your life. There is nothing the devil can do about it. You are not walking in ignorance. You are holding these keys. Please listen to me. When heaven decides to partner with you, heaven will reveal to you supernatural strategies for victory. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, when you read from verse 4 and 5, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, the weapons that we are going to use to establish victory, they are not man-made, not fabricated by the intelligence of men, he says. But mighty unto God. Please give it to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4. The weapons of our warfare, it says, are not carnal, man-made, but mighty through God. Mighty through God. Another expression, mighty through partnership with God. Mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ superior weapons of victory god begins to reveal to you strategies in this case he said joshua i'm going to give you a strategy that does not make sense but believe it this is the strategy for the next season what is it gather your men don't fight go around jericho once every day for six days and then listen to what i will tell you one day imagine brothers and sisters the generals in nigeria going around Sambisa or going around Abuja every day and just singing you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you to fight and they say just relax victory is on his way what sort of a strategy is that they are not carnal so God can give you a strategy and say go and lock yourself for the next three days write all your prayer requests on the ground and dance on it what sort of a strategy is that lord i want a change of season i'm looking for partners in ministry you are not giving me phone numbers i am a prophet i can hear god says leave that this is your strategy and you're dancing like a madman dancing like a madman and while you are dancing somebody's waking up from his bed because the strategies are, let me tell you this, divine strategy are, they look deceptfully weak until you see the power that is contained in them. Go around Jericho. Do you know the Bible says five chariots could sit on the fence of Jericho? That means even if it falls, it's still another fence. Five chariots on a fence. And yet a man begins to 
to sing around it. And then on the final day, it says, now you will go around seven times. And after the seventh time, there will be a shout. It's called the healer. The highest praise. At the instance of that shout, listen please. A miracle will happen. And they went round and round. And then they lifted up their voices. Watch this people of God. When they shouted, the Bible says that the fence, it did not just fall, it sank. Right down. The fence sank down. Victory. Cheap victory. Because of divine strategies. When Elijah as a prophet, sir. I'm wrapping up. Elijah as a prophet of God. There was hunger in the land. The first strategy that was given to him is go and stay at Brook Cherith. I will send you a raven. Are we Bible students? I will send you a raven to feed you. And then you will drink water from the brooks. But the Bible says a time came the brook dried. That's usually the problem. When the current strategy is no longer effective, you will need to, even though he was a prophet, he could not invent a strategy by himself. And God said, now the strategy has changed. If you want to last until rain comes, I am about to send you not to the house of a billionaire. I'm sending you to the house of a widow. You will help her and you will feed from her. He was on his way to Zarephath and he met this woman on her way gathering sticks. He said, woman, bring me water. Make me a morsel of bread. She said, I'm about to make the last one and die. He said, not so. I'm here on an instruction. It's a new season for two of us. It's a new season for two of us. The Bible says she ate from that and lasted. Brothers and sisters, ask successful people. Tell you the foolish things God asks them to do. Ask your pastor. Ask your bishops. Ask, ask, ask everyone who is a leader. The pastors in this ministry, the branches, ask your bishop, ask his wife. They will tell you at a point in their life, God gave instructions that did not make sense. They obeyed those instructions from dancing around to shouting like mad people to emptying your account to fasting for no reason, to praying. Pumps of our warfare are not carnal. If it makes sense to you, it most likely may not be God speaking. God talks to you like he's talking to himself. So if you analyze his speakings from the standpoint of intellect, you will find out that it does not make sense. Moses, why are you crying before me? Tell the people to go forward. Go forward where? Imagine that you come and tell 2.5 million people, walk on water and go. But that was a strategy for their victory. If it be thou, bid me come. He said, come, walk on that water. The wedding in Cana, they were used to brewing wine. But the Bible says the wine finished, John chapter 2. They needed another strategy for continuity. Embarrassment was going to happen in that feast now. People were thirsty. They needed drink. But there was no wine. And he said, gather six vessels. Another strategy. Fill it with water. Then he now decided to embarrass them. Fetch the water and take it to the rulers. Not even test it among yourself. Take it directly to the rulers. Without testing it yourself. That's a risk. Ah! But water he turns into wine. That's a miracle worker. He opens the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. It's into the darkness he shines. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Listen. The reason why many of us 
may have marked time in certain seasons is because even though you have submitted to circumcision your ego you have not gotten your ego out of the way to have the flexibility to obey divine instructions divine instructions are very embarrassing there's no time I would have given you a few of the senseless instructions that God has given me in this life hmm. very unreasonable but they contain mysterious power that works within them you are in this place right now and we're going to be praying strategies are going to come for you for your life listen for your business and even for ministry lord why is this struggle in this family leave the issue of a plus b equals to c open up your spirit and then god will tell you let me give you a formula not for everybody for you a formula for you a formula for you and you obey that formula and then your life will just change just like that just like that but you must trust God for grace listen to me you must trust God for grace it takes discernment to change seasons in your life you've heard my stories let me share just one of them a repetition Years ago, I was in Joss Bishop. I went to buy sugar cane. And I saw two old women. And I just felt strong in my spirit to honor them. They were mothers. It was less than 100 naira to give them. I said, please, you people are my mothers. Give me the honor of paying for you. They were trying to open their, uh, this, their, their wrapper and remove money. They said, no, no, let me pay for you. I paid for that sugar cane for them. And then they kept blessing me. For some reason, I did not pay attention to what they were saying. But then one of the women looked at me strangely and said, My son, forever walk upon gold. Is that a human being? Can a human being talk to you like that? Strategies. Strategies. There are some of you, you may find out that nobody is rising in your family. Everybody loves God, but everybody is down. At best, if you rise, something pegs you. Just doing what you have been doing before will not produce the result. Lord, what is the strategy in this season? I need to change seasons. I need to change seasons. Even for some of us, you have been carrying a level and a measure of anointing. A measure of anointing. Lord, can't you take me higher and enlarge my coast? You may be praying and fasting, but there may be a strategy by God to you. We're about to pray. I sense the grace of God in this place. Bring for me two people now. The power of God is coming very mightily on them. Do I have a few minutes, Bishop? This is a Sunday service. I just saw light. There is such an unction that is coming on two people. Please let me have them here. It's, it's an anointing. I'm seeing that the Lord is breaking. The, ah. Please. Once that happens, I want you to bring them. The power of God is moving two people. It will come upon them. Please carry them. Just bring them to the front here. We are going to pray. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Our 
Hallelujah. We're praying. Who is Josephine? Is it Josephine? I'm hearing the name Josephine. Is there someone with that name? Josephine. 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 Who is that? You are wearing like um, like green or lemon. Josephine. Is there someone like that? Josephine. What's your name? Is the mic working? Please help us. Just a few minutes and we'll pray. We still have. Is it working? What's your name, my dear? Josephine. You're a member of this church? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Your life is about to change. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I want to pray for you. The Lord is breaking the bondage of witchcraft. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus Christ, every power that will not let you go. Here at this 14th anniversary, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command it leaves you now. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. I declare that you are free free now and free forever my dear look at me the josephine lady lift your hands what do you do i work with ncdc presently ncdc nta ncdc ncdc let me pray for you in the name of jesus every antagonism against you in your office this is what i'm seeing in the name of jesus because i'm seeing trouble let her go now in the name of jesus the christ of god the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name i'm hearing a name chukudi chukudi is there someone with that name who is that what do you do sir i'm a data scientist huh i'm a data scientist you are a data scientist legal Data scientist, data science. Dental science. Dental science. Research and public policy okay. and economist. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing you climb a ladder. And every time I see this in a vision, I know that increase. You are stepping into a new season. You believe that? We're going to pray. Someone will shout loud under the anointing. Bring the person out, please. I just want to speak to the person. We're going to pray now. Remember, we're talking about divine strategies. For some of you, the strategy God gave you was to come for this program. That's it. You see how the devil fought you from coming. You tried to come. No transport. You tried to come. Something happened. Like that man there. Because his ministry is about to change. Bring him. You see. The devil, you will try and try and try and try and try. Someone will annoy you. You want to stay back. But it's the devil trying to stop you. Because the strategy for your lifting. This man, please stand up. This man, I don't know you will come. I don't know anything about you, but I want to pray for you. I'm seeing. What do you have to do with Enugu State? I'm a pastor there. I'm a pastor there. You're a pastor in Enugu State. That's what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. Ah! The grace for revelation. This is the grace that is coming on you in a very strange dimension. I, I stretch my hands towards you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, take that grace. May that anointing shift you to superior levels in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, superior dimensions of revelation by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the minister's role. There's somebody, I'm seeing the power of God come on one person. Please don't be embarrassed. Just one person just on this row. I don't know. I'm seeing like light, fire. It's an ignition of the prophetic grace. So, take that grace to a new season. This man, in the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. I shift you to a new dimension in the spirit. Shelakata. Everyone, please open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute. Please begin to pray. Begin to pray. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. 
Hallelujah. New season. That oil. Look at me, sir. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Shout loud Jesus as loud as you can. I release you into a new level of grace by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Huh? Ministry, sir. Ministry, ministry. You are doing ministry? Yes. Your own ministry? Yes. Where? Well, um, it's an interdimensional ministry at the moment. Don't feel bad. I'm seeing chains all around you. Amen. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is saying to set you free. I stretch my hands. Take that grace. Take that fire. Go back with signs and wonders. I open new horizons by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Grace to do ministry with integrity. May the Lord anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray. Father, the kind of circumcision that must happen in my life and my destiny in this season, let it come upon me. Lift your voice and pray. Is someone praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have to walk with time. Please apologize. Just give me two, three minutes. I'm seeing a family. It's like every two, two years, there is a pattern of death. Two years, someone must die. Either someone in the family related or like maybe, an, maybe uh, an, just someone within the family. Is there someone like that? I want to pray and break that demonic chain right now. Where are you from? I'm from Enugu, sir. Huh? Enugu. I'm seeing someone you've been looking for admission for one, two, three, four. You've written jam. This is like five years or so. Four, five years. You've been searching, searching for admission. Is there someone like that? I want to pray with you very quickly. It's your time for deliverance now. Mama, I want to pray for you. Still the same case. I'm standing in faith with Bishop. And we're declaring that every planting that is not of the Lord, that brings patterns. Are we in agreement, church? That every pattern that is not of God, over these dear people, it must go right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray for them. Open your mouth and begin to pray for them. I want to pray. I'm seeing chains in this place. Please, I want you to believe. God brought you here to shift seasons in your life. You shouldn't come here and just go back and say, I came to church. No. Seasons. This is why God put it upon the life of his servant. Insist. Be angry. I can't be at this level again for the rest of my life. It must be a new season in my life. I want to pray right now. Listen. There are people here and their families that have been under all sorts of demonic captivity. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that he may destroy the works of the devil. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Listen, shout it as loud as you can from the depth of your heart. Please, ushers, I want you to bring those under the anointing after that shout. Whether you are an usher or not, just help them if you are there and you are a worker in the, in the ministry. Are we ready? Father, every power that is not of the Christ, sitting over the destinies of people here on this mountain of the lord i stand in agreement with the bishop the angel over this commission and lord i declare that at the count of three as they shout let that wall of jericho it must fall down now are you ready at the count of three shout jesus one two three jesus let them go now I command every witchcraft, every orchestration of darkness, give way now, 
Lift your voice and pray. I break free from every chain. I break free from every chain. Every limiting chain. I break free from every chain. Bring them out. Bring them out. Zechariah chapter 1, please. Zechariah chapter 1. From verse 18. Someone's life is changing. Please, media, can you help us? Just five minutes and we're done. Zechariah 1 and verse 18. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. Next verse. 19. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered, he said, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, which have scattered Israel, which have scattered Jerusalem. 19. 20 now. Praise the Lord. Well, let me just quote it. He said, and I have sent these are the horns. Okay. Let's go to 21. That these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Look up, please. So that no man did lift up his head. But I have come to fray them. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. There are horns that insist that people don't rise. There are horns that insist that families don't rise. Madam, that woman at the back there, lift your hands. You, yes. I'm seeing light coming to you. This woman, yes. No, the one looking at me now, lift your hands. I just saw light coming to you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that will not let you go, help her. Everything that will not let you go, help her please, my God. He must let you go now. All those who are out here in the name of Jesus, I declare that every power that will not let you go, right now in this assembly hear my voice i speak as one sent in the name that is above all names i declare their exodus from your life forever 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 that the egyptians you see you will see them no more forever what is this that you are holding my friend what is this huh you are looking for a job. Where? What is your name? Do you believe in miracles? Give me your credentials. In the name of Jesus, look at me. I'm saying it in the open. It's not in the secret. I give you three months from today. In the name of Jesus, may God settle you honorably by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place a grace upon you. Go with this grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will open doors for you beyond your imagination. To the glory of the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah. Let me pray for someone who is always seeing dead people. You go to bed and here they come. People that have died oh, a long time ago. Calling you, trying to eat with you. This is what I'm saying. The Lord wants to set that person free. Please, who is that person? Very quickly. Your members of this church. You see why it's good to come? You see why it's good? You Listen. For all the remaining sessions in this conference, I want you to go and gather your family members. Even if there's no space, you will sit on the zinc. Are we together now? By the grace of God, I'm still here. I think we have two more sessions. In the morning and in the evening. I think God is really ready to visit and just end some things once and for all. My sister, look at me. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a veil all over your face. This is what I'm seeing. That you are looking at someone physically, but in the realm of the spirit, you are not seeing a face. Anything covering anyone's glory here, in the name of Jesus, I tear that veil into pieces. I tear that veil into pieces. Hear me? The living has nothing to do with the dead. It is appointed unto men to die once after that the judgment. Whoever has died, no matter how close the person is, they are gone and they are gone. There is a, a partition. Hear me? The grave is a spirit. It can call men. It can call men. In the name that is above all names. Here at this church, every one of you who the spirit of death and the grave is trying to call or trying to call love habakatapatos ketepa empreketo sekete barakash ekete kotos kotopakata barakete shebrende kepotsotokopa kepreketo shiketa oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory i declare be free right now in the name of jesus be free right now in the name of jesus I release you. What do you do, sir? Look at me. You are a stockbroker. I want to pray for you. Stand up. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a lot of load on your head. I have to pray for you. Because what is on your head now, if I don't pray for you, you are in trouble. You can even have BP. It will destroy you. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, may God show you mercy. May God show you mercy. May God show you mercy in the name of Jesus. We have to round up. For some of you here, as you lie down to sleep, God will open up the blueprint of the next season of your life and show you what you need to do in the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, as you go to the place of prayer, God will show you the mystery behind the occurrences in your life alongside the solution that brings you into victory in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God everything that is dead in your life hear the word of the Lord I declare that it comes back to life now help her, help her Help her with the child, please. Just believe what I'm saying. I'm not entertaining you. I say it again that everything that is dead in your life, hear the word of the Lord. Talita Kumi. I declare that it comes back alive now. And every door that has refused to open, that door has been before you for many years. And yet it will not open. In the name of Jesus, we scatter that door right now. In this 14th anniversary, everything that your father, the bishop, truly desires for you, in your life, your finances, your spiritual life, 
I stand in faith and I lend my voice with him and his wife. I agree with you by the spirit. May it be yours. Let victory be yours. Let increase be yours. Spiritual fire, let it be yours. A resurrection of your prayer life, let it be yours. Activation of spiritual gifts, let it be yours. In the name of Jesus Christ. So please, by the grace of God, we still have a few sessions tomorrow and I'm going to be sharing with you something very powerful, especially for ministers of the gospel. I pray that you come, discipline yourself, come with something to write, enlarge your heart and then hopefully if God grants grace, the night will be a miracle and impartation night when God will grant us grace. There are graces you have desired, you have coveted the Lord will transfer these graces and set you on fire like the foxes of Samson. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name.